while all the other countries were already out of the cycle of the slave trade, not depending on the slave trade, even countries that still had slavery, Cuba was um, importing slaves all the way to the 1860s. So the presence of slavery in Cuba is both recent and intense at a level that is a match within the Atlantic. Because Cuba entered le relatively late into this form of intensive enslavement. The people that came from Africa to Cuba in this period were different groups of African people than the people that came from Africa in previous periods. What we get is central where is today Nigeria, the, the Yoruba people, bringing to Cuba a very sophisticated form of political organization, a very sophisticated form of religious organization. And we have, as a result, the descendants of these people being some of the most um, politically active um, communities of Afro descendants in the Atlantic world. And they participated massively in the wars of Cuban independence as soldiers and generals in the armies that were essential for Cuban independence. And that is what also explains why race relations in 20th century Cuba are so complex, because the activism of the Afro-Cuban population had made them an important part of modern citizenship in Cuba. But at the same time, the racism of the now Cubans before, before that Creoles that brought them as a slave from Africa very recently made the relationship with these citizens a very complex one. So in 1912, we have a, a war in which descendants of a slave that had organized itself in the form of the first political party along racial lines, the Partido Independiente de Color, or Independent Color Party, were massacred by the descendants of their fellow fighters for Cuban independence. And this, this tragedy in 1912 marked then the, the relationship between um, Afro-descendants and Euro-descendants in Cuba all the way to the present.